Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service. We're glad you're here with us this morning. We welcome you whether you have been <laughs> on computer with us since March 22nd or this is your first Sunday. And if we could, we would give you a jar of virtual jam if you're visiting with us for the first time. Happy and blessed Mother's Day to all the moms out there and we hope that this is a good day for you today. I do have a few announcements for you. Let's see. First, a reminder that you're welcome to join us for virtual fellowship after the service. Um, I'm going to be actually running, well, driving, not running, driving to pick up a Mother's Day brunch for my family, but uh, we encourage you to join us on the link afterwards and let us know about how your day is going and joining for a good time of fellowship. And I'd like to thank you for the many responses we got on the MailChimp survey we did a couple of weeks ago regarding our virtual service. Um, I do wanna mention a couple of things. There were a number of topics that were suggested and I'm looking forward to preaching on those. Right now we've got worship planned through about June 7th because we've got big hitters coming up, Pentecost, Trinity Sunday, those kinds of things. But once we get past June 7th, um, I will be looking forward to using some of those topics and a couple of you would love to have coffee with you once we can meet again in person and, and get your thoughts about some of those uh, very meaty topics that I'll be able to preach upon. I do want to remind you that right now the campus is closed. Um, however, I am thankful that uh, through the connections with Sandra Slattery, I will be in a webinar with the state and the governor next Tuesday to find out where we are in terms of churches reopening in Oregon. So um, hopefully I'll have some more information for you after that meeting. But right now, as I said, everything is closed on campus. That being said, campus is not looking too good these days outside. We have a lot of weeds. And so if you are looking for some um, weed therapy, and, well, that doesn't sound very good, does it? Um, therapy, taking weeds out of the ground. There, let me try and redo that. Uh, we'd love to have you come out and pick some of the weeds up, uh, quite a few around the campus, and uh, just maintain your social distancing. So hopefully you can do that for us in the next couple of weeks. And a reminder that Susan and I are only coming in once every couple of weeks to the office to process bills and taking checks and those sorts of things. So um, your checks may take a little bit longer than normal, uh, but we'd love to have you continue to give and thank you so much for your support. And speaking of support, I wanna thank you so much for your water bottle donations to the Aura Community Center. Um, I took at least 50 of them over the last week or so to the center and they have been so appreciative of getting those. Again, those are for our unhoused uh, neighbors who don't have options to get water right now because the city has had to turn off all the drinking fountains in Ashland because of the virus. So be because you were able to give your water bottles, um, a number of folks now have a water source for the day. So thank you for following Matthew 25. We appreciate it. And a reminder that we have a Zoom meeting on Thursday mornings at 10. Uh, it's a chance to check in. Uh, one of the things we've been doing lately is we've been telling stories. Stories about ourselves and about our lives, trying to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, something you don't even get to do so much during worship and fellowship time regularly. So we hope you'll join us Thursdays at 10 for a chance to check in. And at some point, we will be taking the one great hour of sharing offering. Uh, we're still not sure exactly when that will be. We may try and bump things up a little bit. One of the things that one great hour of sharing has been talking about is uh, taking those funds and using them right now through Presbyterian Disaster Assistance for a response to COVID-19. So stay tuned. Um, we may update how we're going to do that offering. Past sermons are available on our website. You're welcome to uh, just click on and any sermon you want to look at and take apart, feel free. Now comes, I think, a fun section. Uh, what have you been up to? This is an opportunity to just share what's been going on in your lives since we aren't able to meet together. And so a number of folks have sent pictures in and uh, here's the first one. 
So Carol Horton, one of the things that she does is she puts up her American flag daily to remind her that we're all in this together. I think that's great. And yet, Carol has a sense of humor. Even the yard art is practicing uh, safe social distancing, so that's good. Sam Alvord, a busy carpenter man, is now remodeling his bathroom. Um, wow, that's a lot of work, and I hope it turns out well, Sam. And then Pat is actually teaching music classes online right now. So that's a great uh, thing she's doing a number of days a week. And maybe we can tune in at some point, Pat, and learn how to do music. That'd be fun. And Paula and I have put in our Victory Over Virus garden. Uh, we did that last week. I don't know about you, but gardening has become a thing. Um, now, if you go to any of the, the co-ops in those places, those places are just busy with business. So um, come by and see our garden sometime. And then Linda Purdom sent us a number of beautiful pictures. This is just one of many. Uh, there's another one that's actually in, the, in the, the, ser the service feed that you'll see in a bit. So if you'd like to send me your pictures, I'm happy to put them in. Let us know what you've been up to. It's a way for us to maintain some social connection and be together. Those, my friends, are our announcements. Now let us bring our hearts and minds together as we worship God. I hope you enjoy the intro.
Good morning and happy Mother's Day. My name is Elaine Morgan and I'm the lay leader for today. When the session met on March 15th and decided that for our congregation's safety we really shouldn't worship together in our sanctuary for a while, we certainly thought that we'd be able to worship together again in this space by Easter. Well, this COVID-19 crisis has affected each and every one of us. For too many people, the effects have been catastrophic with loss of, life, of jobs and income. And for over 78,000, it has been fatal in this country alone. Last week, Pastor Dan and Psalm 23 reminded us that God is with us as we walk through the valley of the shadow. If Eleanor Robeson were lay leader today, she would remind us that God is before us and behind us, above us and below us, and on each side of us. God's gracious love surrounds us at all times. May we relax and take that in. Let us worship our gracious, gracious God this morning, beginning with the words in the call to worship responsively. Gaze into heaven and see the glory of God. Lift up your eyes and behold a risen Christ. God is our rock of refuge, a strong fortress. Christ leads and guides us every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> We have tasted the goodness of God and know the presence of Christ. We have, we come, have come to, to find, find the way, the, way, the truth, truth, and the life. We, we have, have gathered, gathered together virtually to ask for strength, receive hope, <clears throat> and find direction to serve, to serve others. Praise, Praise God. God. Our hymn is the Day of Resurrection. our doubts and questions, who fail to see Christ present with us, are called to confess. When we do not believe, we fail to see the goodness of God. Let us seek God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray together. 
we confess that sometimes we have covered our eyes so we cannot see the risen Christ, holy God. We seek to isolate ourselves from the world in pain. We reject the one you have sent to us to show the way. Help us to see with eyes of faith, holy one, amen. hearts be troubled. Whoever believes in God will not be put to shame. You have been chosen to proclaim the mighty acts of God, who called you out of the shadows into God's marvelous light. We rejoice. rejoice. We have received, received the mercy, mercy of God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and, and also with you. you. Scripture lesson this morning is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. 
Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and take, talking to each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopsis, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place the, there in three days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But he had hoped that the that he was the one. To, uh, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, inter he interpreted the to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of as he were as if he were going on but they urged him strongly saying stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over so he went to stay with them when he was at the table with them he took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to them then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we, he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord for which we give thanks. Thanks be to God and thank you, Elaine. Will you pray with me, please? God, as we go through this passage together, may it speak to us and help us to know you are present with us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this past week, as I was getting out of my car after having gone shopping and was heading across the street to get into my house, I heard somebody say, hi! And I noticed sort of peripherally that there were some people on the street and I said back to them, hi. How are you? They said as I kept walking. I thought, well, these strangers sure are friendly. And so I turned back and said, fine, how are... And then I looked a little more closely and realized that it was a good portion of the family of the Freeds 
who were walking down the street. Lori and her sister and Esther, uh, they were taking her out for a walk on a beautiful afternoon. I'm used to seeing Lori and Esther on a Sunday morning in worship, not walking towards me on the street. I find I often do that when I see people out of context, like when I see somebody I know who works as a checker at Market of Choice out for a walk go by. I just can't quite place them, although they seem familiar to me. I think in some way that is what happened with Cleopas and the other disciple of Jesus when he appeared to them on the road to Emmaus. Even though he was there, right in front of their faces, he was out of context so they didn't recognize him. In addition, so many things had happened, and the last thing they expected was to see Jesus face to face. They had their minds on other things. These two disciples were doing what I like to call stress walking. I've done that some over the last few weeks during this pandemic. You know what that is? It's when some of uh, when something tragic or frustrating has happened or is happening and you walk with another person to blow off steam and just talk things out. I would guess these two disciples were stressed and sad having seen their Lord, their leader, die, wondering if they might soon be arrested by Roman authorities for being his followers. With all of their swirling emotions, it's no wonder that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. As Jesus drew near the two, he feigned ignorance of recent events. Cleopas was surprised. Apparently, the event of his crucifixion was well known, so Cleopas recounted all the events that had happened, how Jesus, a great and mighty prophet, had been condemned to death and crucified, how they had hoped he would be the one, the one to rescue Israel, to redeem it, how it had been three days since all of these things had happened. Reverend Nancy Sehested says, they had hoped that he was really going to be the one to set the oppressed free. They had hoped that he was really going to be the one to lead their movement for liberty and justice for all. They had hoped, but no more. Tragedy had struck. Devastation and despair crashed through Hope's door and demanded entry into their inner chambers. Two defeated disciples dropped their heavy hearts on that dusty road. Jesus was dead. Three days had passed and the world was unchanged. Rome was still in charge. Then Cleopas mentioned how some of the women disciples went and saw the empty tomb. They said they saw an angel and they were told Jesus had risen. Some of the disciples went to look for themselves but only saw an empty tomb and didn't see any sign of a risen Messiah. Now, it's at this moment that Jesus could have said, Hi, guys, it's me. But instead, he sought an opportunity to teach. And so he reminded them of the prophecies from the Hebrew scriptures and how Christ's death fulfilled all the scriptures about Messiah. Their journey must have seemed to take less time as he walked with them and taught them. Suddenly, they were at their village, the place they called home. The sun was setting and their long walk was at an end. It seemed that the stranger who knew so much about Messiah and scripture was traveling on. Both of them, however, felt something with this man. They wanted to spend more time with him. It's late. The day is almost over. Why not come in and have supper with us? Jesus agreed. And as he sat at the table, he did the same thing he had done at the Last Supper with the disciples. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it. It is likely that there were more than just the 12 disciples with Jesus the night of that Last Supper. Perhaps Cleopas and the other disciple were there as well. And so as they saw him take the bread, bless it, and break it, they were suddenly taken back to that scene in the upper room. They put the face of the stranger back into context, and at that exact moment, he vanished. It was suddenly clear to them all at once. Who else could know so much about the scriptures? Who else could teach in such a way? Who else could have broken the bread in the same manner? 
Surely our hearts were on fire when he was with us. We have to go and tell the others we've seen the risen Christ. Jesus has risen. They were so excited that they didn't wait till the next day to travel. And so the two of them set out at night, even though they had just walked seven miles and were tired. Traveling seven miles on foot in sandals. How long would that have taken? Well, it takes me about 45 minutes to run a 5K, a little over three miles, and that's wearing running shoes. My guess is that their journey must have taken them a good two and a half hours to get to Emmaus and then the same amount of time getting back. But they were so excited that Jesus had appeared to them, they rushed back in the dark despite the distance to tell others what had happened. When they got back, they heard that someone else had also had an eyewitness encounter with Jesus. Verse 34 tells us the risen Lord had already appeared to Peter. And according to 1 Corinthians 15, 5, Jesus appeared to Peter before anyone else. Although we have no <clears throat> details of that meeting, whatever occurred also energized the disciples. So what happened as a result of all of these encounters with the risen Lord? Originally, Luke and the book of Acts were together as one work. Acts is really the second half or part two of a single work. The first part, Luke's account of Jesus here on earth, set the stage for part two, the Acts of the Apostles. Part two is the establishment of the Christian church, disciples going and preaching to thousands, people being converted, house churches getting established. The catalyst for all of those events that are mentioned in Acts is the encounters the disciples had with the risen Christ. As they met and recognized Jesus, they were inspired. Their hearts burned with faith, and they spread the word. <clears throat> so what then does this encounter on the road to Emmaus tell us for today? We who were modern-day disciples. We see that Jesus appeared to the disciples at their most discouraging moment, their most fearful time, their most anguished of days. Then he revealed his true identity. Jesus instructed them with words and sustained them by his presence. Well, my friends, we certainly are in discouraging and fearful times right now. So many people are having days of anguish all over our nation, all over the world. Here in Ashland, things are looking particularly bleak economically right now. Oregon Shakespeare Festival closed for the season. SOU is having to furlough employees. Is the risen Christ among us? Is his presence able to sustain us, give us hope in the midst of hopelessness, light in the midst of darkness? This passage reminds us that Christ comes to us in those discouraging, fearful, and anguished times. In such difficult times, we need to look for the risen Christ among us so that we can find some hope and light. Kind of like that book series, Where's Waldo? Except this is much, much more meaningful. Since I felt led to preach upon this topic, I decided I would look for Jesus out in the world. So on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I went out for a run. I went for a run up Croson and on to Siskiyou towards the church. And I kept my eyes alert on the lookout for Jesus. I confess I had no encounters with Jesus. But I think Jesus began to work upon me. And I began to think about places he would be in this world. First, I thought of 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery. And I say his name again, Ahmad Arbery. A young African-American man who was jogging through his own neighborhood in rural Georgia and was shot and killed by two white men because they thought he was involved in a crime. Those two white suspects were free to do as they pleased for six weeks after they shot and killed Ahmad, until finally being arrested this past Thursday after a national outcry for justice to be done. 
I imagine Jesus there with Ahmad's mother as she cried for justice for her innocent son in a TV interview. I think Jesus had his arms around her. I thought how unjust it was that I, a white male jogger, could have gone through that neighborhood and not even been given any attention. I thought about how my white privilege was real and how unfair that was and how Black Lives Matter is still just a slogan rather than a reality in this country. I then began to think of the times that I have encountered Jesus in my life. I've had many encounters with the risen Christ, both joyful and painful, on the face of a young homeless couple on the street in San Francisco with a newborn child, on the face of a traveler in need of gas as I helped her get gas for her car, in the eyes of a blushing bride on her wedding day, on the face of a woman named Dolores in Nicaragua who had lost everything from Hurricane Mitch and was living in a cardboard shack along with eight other people. In the eyes of someone coming forward to receive the imposition of the ashes upon their foreheads on an Ash Wednesday. In the smile of a volunteer as I handed him bags of water bottles for the unhoused at the Aura Community Center. And in the many faces of those I have been with on their deathbed. Jesus was there. And in looking back on those moments, just like Cleopas and the other disciple, my heart as well was on fire. In our encounters with the risen Lord, our hearts can burn with the flames of faith, and we can be inspired to do great things of hope and purpose, even in difficult times such as these. So, where is Jesus? Well, he told us in Scripture where he would be. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 25 that whatever we do to the least of these, whatever we do or say to another, we in effect do to him. We will also find him when we break bread and share the cup in the Lord's Supper. And I hope in some way that's happened for you, even though we are having communion together now virtually, and it's rather togetherish instead of together on the computer screen. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 5, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Jesus also said, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am here. Jesus is present in many guises all over this world. Theologian Jim Forrest wrote, I am in those around you, especially those who are being made to walk the way of the cross, the hungry and thirsty, the naked and homeless, the sick and imprisoned. Suddenly, very often when we least expect it, a word is said by someone we know or we see something unusual in a stranger's face. Their expression alters and we find ourselves in the presence of a huge mystery. That face seems so easily mapped, so safely flat, a kind of dull wallpaper. Yet suddenly a seam is revealed, a door swings open, and we find ourselves in the presence of Christ. In today's fractured and contentious world, where there is so much suffering and death, such injustice over the value of life, such racism and hatred, such polarization and disagreement over what is safe and when things can open, if we can recognize the face of Christ in others, then fear will be replaced by faith. Differences can melt away when we are able to see Christ in others. So, keep your eyes open for the risen Messiah, who is among us in so many ways. May we have the eyes of faith to recognize Christ in other people's faces, so that we might not be discouraged, but find hope. That we would not be fearful, but faithful. That we would be sustained and find God's shining light before us. 
May we meet and recognize Jesus and be inspired so that our hearts burn with faith and we too spread the word. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Let us have silence as we consider God's word for us this day. Let us pray. Oh God, as we go out into a world that is fearful and discouraging and difficult, help us to have the eyes of faith. Help us to be able to recognize your presence in and among us so that we might live in hope and faith and light. Amen. So the hymn we're about to sing is one you probably don't know. That being said, um, after I played it on the piano, the tune stuck in my head, so I think it's really pretty. And this is all about the road to Emmaus and Christ showing up. It's called Day of Arising. I invite you to join us and sing together. This being Mother's Day and the fact that there are numerous places in Scripture that talk about God as mother, I found a song that I love, and it's called As a Child Rests in Its Mother's Arms. So my soul rests in you. It's from Psalm 131. And so you're welcome to sing the refrain. Uh, We will be singing the verses as we prepare for this time of prayer together. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. My God, I am not proud. I do not look for things too great. As 
a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. My God, I trust in you. You care for me, you give me peace. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. As a child rests in its mother's arms, so will I rest in you. I do want to remind you that if you have a prayer request, all you need to do is send it to me, preferably by Saturday evening, and I can get it added to the list. There are a couple of things to let you know about our church family. Um, many of you know and love B. Payton. Well, I just received a note from her, and she will be moving in June to Las Cruces, New Mexico. So I want to encourage you to write B and to let her know how special she has been as part of this congregation. Um, and we look forward to hearing from her as she makes a new place to call home, and we will miss her. Also, we are one short this morning with our staff. Victor Conway is not with us because Victor's mother passed away last night. So, please keep Victor in your prayers. So as we go through these requests, I want to remind you at the end we will be doing the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this gathering together today. That even though we are distanced on computer, that we are still gathered in Christ's name, and so he is present with us, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you stretch out your ear to hear our requests and answer them. And so we pray you would hear us as we pray for God's justice for Ahmad Arbery, the 25-year-old who was chased and gunned down while jogging in his neighborhood. We pray for your justice and lament the six weeks it took to act to arrest the two white males who shot him. We pray God's justice rolls down like an ever-flowing stream on behalf of Ahmad and his mother. We pray for his family as they mourn his loss. We reject white nationalism in all of its forms, prejudice, racism, and hatred toward the other. We pray and work for the day that black lives really do matter to all people. We pray for wisdom, commitment, and energy to develop ministries to support our local community and economy as tourism and the university cut jobs. We pray for your blessing upon Victor, whose mother died last night. We lift up prayers for strength and peace for Victor and his family as they mourn her loss. We give thanks for the years that B. Payton has spent with this congregation, for the ways in which she touched us with her poetry and her beautiful loving spirit. Oh God, we pray you would bless her as she moves in June to New Mexico and sets down roots with her family. We ask for your blessing of healing for Marjorie Bulkley, who will be having teeth removed tomorrow as a result of the chemotherapy she went through after mouth cancer. God bless her, 
Help her with strength and healing. Almighty God, we are weary and anxious. We are exhausted and overwhelmed. Our quarantine fatigue grows even though we want to do what is right for the sake of the most vulnerable among us. We wonder how long this season of social distancing will last. While we are eager to be together, to get back to the routines and activities we once took for granted, we do not want to endanger any of your beloved children or risk an even higher death toll. Our sorrow over our losses persists despite our faith in your promise of a good future and abundant life. We lament missed milestones, jobs lost, loved ones sick, lives disrupted, resources stretched, essential workers heavily burdened, and far too many people dead and buried without the rituals of grief that offer us comfort. We pray, God of grace, for patience in the present moment. Give us the ability to abide in you when we feel as if we cannot abide this painful season one minute longer. We plead for wisdom. As leaders in every realm of our communal life face the complex decisions of when to ease our isolation and how to begin to return to work and school and travel and church, Grant them discernment that takes into account the least of these, the priceless value of each person, and our obligation to love our neighbor as ourselves. Send your spirit to witness to your truth, to remind us of all Jesus taught, and to unite us inextricably to you and to each other. We pray in the name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Please be sure to continue to support the church with your regular pledge during this time. As you read in the dialogue, our rental income has stopped and our treasurer is projecting a shortfall for 2020. You can go to our church website, firstpressashland.org, to give online or drop your check through the mail slot in the administration building or mail it to First Presbyterian Church at Post Office Box 626. Let us pray. To you, O God, be all power and glory, blessing and honor, now and forevermore. Your mercy at work within us enables us to do and be more than we could ever ask. Your spirit surrounds us as we dwell in the shadow of your gracious deliverance. It is Christ who guides us as we go forth to serve. May all that we do reveal your benevolence, and may what we offer you reflect your goodness. Amen. Join us in our closing hymn for this morning, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright.
for Jesus, he's there somewhere. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God be with you always. May God raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of John, make you to shine like, shine like the sun, and may you be held in the hands of God's palm. Alleluia and amen. Mm -hmm. Now enjoy the postlude. Thank you.